Hey everyone, as promised, we're going to talk about grant writing today, everyone's favorite subject. Well, because there's so much to say, I think that I'm going to actually split this up into a couple of videos. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. You might think that the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to find people to give you money. That's actually not the case at all. The first thing you want to do before you even start researching funders is to really figure out what it is that you want to do in the first place. The reason I say this is because really effective grant writing and you know fundraising partnerships are based on a mutual interest. So it's not about you trying to fit what you do into the mold of a funder. Um, we call that mission creep. You actually want to be thinking about what it is that you want to do and find funders whose missions are already aligned with that. So once you have an idea of what your programming is going to be for the next year, um, you have a clear idea of what your mission is for your organization or for yourself if you're applying as an individual, um, then it's time to really start thinking about doing your grant research. So where might you look? Well, the first thing is you could look at other people or other organizations who do similar work to what you do and start thinking about ways to find out who funds them. So you could go to their events and look at the back of their programs, you could look on their posters, you could look on their websites. There are tons of places where funders and donors are listed and that's a great way for you to figure out who's giving in your community and for what. And it, don't even stop by thinking, you know, oh, I have to go look at all the rest of the chamber music groups out there. Really, you could be looking at dance companies, you could be looking at theater. If you're in arts education, you could be looking at arts educators in a variety of different artistic disciplines. And that's really worth doing because a lot of times funders who fund one art form may also have programs to fund others. So it's worth learning more about them. So definitely cast the net wide in terms of your research. There are also a ton of online resources that you can use. The Foundation Center is one, Grant Station is another. If you're in Illinois, the Donors Forum of Chicago is wonderful and they have an online database that you can subscribe to. And all of that is wonderful in terms of just gathering data and learning more about what's out there. So once you have a clear idea of what you want to do and some idea of some of the funders who might be interested in similar things, at that point you can really start getting into what the particular grant opportunities are with any given funder. So that involves going to their website and reading everything that they've already put out there about what their deadlines are, who's eligible, what their funding focus is, all of that. And then once you get familiar with what's already available, and please make sure that you do this step first then you can see if there's any information about how they might like to be contacted, if they'd like to be contacted at all. So that could be either by phone or in a letter of inquiry or in an in-person meeting, depending on, on what they say that their preference is. And really, as much contact as you can have in terms of figuring out what their focus is and you know what might be an appropriate ask level and what kind of projects might be the best fit, that's really going to help you to figure out whether or not this is an opportunity for you or whether you should pass and go on to the next one. So I really think that the old adage about people fund people is absolutely true. That if you think about the fact that you're going to be forming a relationship with somebody at that foundation, then you know, you're going to have a conversation that goes back and forth. You're going to have the ability to bounce ideas off and you know, really come up with a proposal that might have a decent shot instead of just putting something out there that may or may not actually be on the right focus for that particular funder. So it's really worth having those conversations if you can. At that point, you really need to follow instructions. So funders are usually very specific about how they like to see applications come in. Everything from what should be contained in there to questions you need to answer to attachments, formatting, how many copies, what does it do? There are so many reasons why a proposal can get denied, and one of the worst reasons is by not following instructions. So, you know, take yourself back to grade school when people told you exactly how to fill in your assignments. This is the time to be really, really picky about that stuff. So, once you've sort of read about what the, the guidelines and all of that are like, you know, you really want to set up a schedule for yourself because chances are you're going to be applying to more than one grant in a given year and it's really worth it to know when all of those things are due because it takes a significant amount of time to put all of this together. It's not just that you have to write but you have to make sure that everything about your program is really well thought out and planned. You know all of the who, what, when, where, why, and how 
is really figured out. And sometimes a lot of that has to do with contacting people outside of yourself, whether it's you know someone you might collaborate with, another organization, and all of that, and, and figuring out all of those details. So it takes a significant amount of time for those folks to get back to you and for those conversations to happen. So really proposals can take a couple months to more than that to put together.